Hey guys, Mike, and I'm back with my 1977 Corvette. And today we are going to replace the rear brake pads and rotors. What you're gonna need is something to drill out those rivets because if your rotors have never been replaced on a C3 Corvette, chances are those rear ones are riveted on. So brace yourself, Corvette is coming. Remove your lugs. I had the beauty ring center cap. This is for the rallies. So you wanna remove that cap. And then what we're gonna do is start taking off each of the lugs. You wanna make sure to have some pressure on it, uh, but not too much so that way the wheel doesn't spin. After you get all the lugs loosened, apply a little bit more pressure to your jack and you want to make sure your jack is capable of supporting the corvette i got a three ton here remove all of them get that pressure under and get ready to get a jack stand underneath that all right so with the wheel removed and the lug nut safely stored so you don't lose them and the beauty cap stored over there so that way it doesn't get scratched up one of two things are going to happen here Either you're gonna have rivets in place where mine are not, or you don't have rivets. If you do have rivets in these holes, that means your rotors have never been touched and this is an original assembly. That means you will have to drill those out in order to get this rotor off the vehicle. And of course, we are gonna have to pull this caliper off, but uh, do keep in mind, that we'll discuss that later if they are drilled out then we just need to remove that and this rotor will pull right off nice and simple. I plan on installing drilled and slotted like most and i've got power stop evolution carbon fiber ceramic performance pads to throw back on it i do not recommend the book recommended organic pads as they are noisy. I've got those pads, the AC Delco organic pads on here right now. They squeal all the time. I've done it correct. I've got the grease in between the vibration absorbers, etc. They are noisy pads. So just do yourself a favor and go with some ceramics, call it a day. Let's get to the next. All right, so we want to get these pads out of here to start prepping things. So you have a cotter key right here. We're going to take this needle nose and we're simply going to uh, squeeze that cotter key. I'm going to try and do this one handed. Got the cotter key out. Now we're going to remove this pin. Nice and simple. Now we're going to remove the brake pads just like that. You can see I got the grease on there like I told you. These are pretty much brand new pads, but look at that. Organic, and that's probably what's making noise right there. How do I know? I'm not a brake specialist, though. I'm not Midas. All right, so that's not a good sign. So what that tells me is one of my calipers is leaking a little bit. It ate the paint off the back of my pad. So, that's not uncommon. You see how that piston did not push out, but that one did. Could be an issue with this, possibly not, but we're gonna roll with the install. All right, for this next part, you're gonna need a 5.8 ratchet and socket and we are going to attack that right there and then on the back side of this that one okay so i've got it soaking a little bit of penetrating oil obviously um that extension is not going to work for this side, but will that side. Also, uh, you have the option of disconnecting your brake line. It is always going to be good anyway to 
um, disconnect it and gravity bleed the whole system afterwards. So don't sweat if you have to disconnect the brake line. You got a hard line over here and it goes right into the frame. All right, so let's get that, uh, let's get that started. All right, here's a video of starting to remove. I personally did have to put a breaker on that and break that bolt loose, but now it comes right out, no problem. All right, with both bolts pulled out, this will simply lift up. Pretty simple. We're gonna support this in a second. I'll come right back to you. All right, with the caliper supported, we are free. If you have drilled out these rivets to pull off this rotor. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. And a lot of cleaning up to do. So get your brake spray and let's get to it. We're gonna chuck these bad boys. By the way, there is a difference between the rear and the front. We're gonna have to repeat that whole process on the other side, but that's how to remove and uh, get your brake shoes off. All right, everyone. So I'm at the point of where we got the brand new rotors and you want to make sure that you have this uh, the correct one going in the correct direction for the right side and then for the left side it's typically there's a sticker mount, uh, somewhere on there that will tell you otherwise you can just look for the the pattern and it should be going as if it's going to wick off the dust as you're driving anyway so i ended up getting new calipers from zip corvette this does not have the ac delco stamp but they are brand new uh, i just didn't want to deal with the rebuilt uh it's my choice not to do the ac delco i know some may frown upon that but hey we got brand new calipers so before we mount this rotor we want to make sure that the park brake pads are withdrawn. To do that, you want to soak everything on the inside of this uh, with some penetrating oil. But we're going to attack this, this little star piece. This, if you were to, um, if this were lined up, because this will eventually complete a revolution, and you'll be able to access this is this hole is for accessing the park brake adjuster screw which is this guy right here we could do a whole video on this but basically simply put tightening it that screw is going to withdraw these pads and that's what you need to do in order to mount that rotor we want to line up those adjuster holes right there and right there with these adjuster holes. If you do not do that, you will be in trouble. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna show you. All right, as you can see, we now have the holes lined up. I can stick a tool all the way through and all we need to do is just mount the caliper. If these are not yet pressurized with brake fluid it makes this a whole lot easier so do not do this or have to redo this make sure to check that before you bleed the brakes check this before you bleed the brakes and voila we have one finished side i just simply reinstalled each bolt in this caliper and it was easy to compress the pistons because there's uh, no pressure due to brand new calipers. Now, I made a great video on the gravity bleeding of calipers. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and follow my channel and look for that video, uh, C3 Corvette Gravity Bleed. 
made easy it's awesome you just basically open up the highest point and as long as these calipers are lower than your uh, front and rear bank in the master cylinder then these will start dripping and the air will purge out want to make sure you have some paper towels down or something to catch the fluid and you just need to I mean just go to the video it's awesome all right everyone in the end I found out that my sway bar was binding up uh, flat I'll show you a picture here I had to actually re or uh, jack the car back up remove each tire and move my sway bar um, one notch ahead with the type of sway bar that I have uh, everyone's gonna have something different if you do have a sway bar and um, just in case that happens to you when you let down the car and the, it's just not settling. Um, check your sway bar and make sure it's not pinched like mine was. Um, so I'm about to let the car down and see how that helped. I'll show you in a sec.